Welcome back. The Wall Street Journal's best-selling author of Multipliers, How the Best Leaders Make Everyone Smarter, Liz Wiseman, is here in Australia telling us how the best leaders inspire their teams to great heights by asking questions, while the bad leaders divide their teams by yelling commands and being typical bossy boots types. Liz, is this a fair summary of your best-selling book? It's a great summary of the book. Okay, now we know you, you didn't write it to solve the problems of parents, but you actually have found that using the, the, the information you gain by looking at great leaders, that actually does help parents as well. It does, and what we found is that the very best leaders at work are using the very same leadership that the best parents are using at home. Yeah. Um, it wasn't something I set out to study, but yeah. I noticed Let's it Let's finish with that. Let's keep as a tease and make sure people keep watching this interview. <laughs> but tell us the, the, the basis of the book. Well, the book began with a very simple observation. I had spent 17 years at Oracle. I worked in senior management there. And as I was on the executive team and I watched the other executives, I had this observation that all of these leaders who were brilliant mm. had a very different impact on the people around them, that some of them seemed to just drain energy and intelligence out of their group. Somehow their intelligence mm. cost the intelligence of the team, mm. while other leaders who were brilliant somehow brought out genius around them. Mm. And I began to wonder why is it that some leaders amplify intelligence while others drain it out of their organizations. Mm. And that's what set me down this path to study this, trying to figure out why. Why are some leaders multipliers or amplifiers of the intelligence of other people? So you use the term multipliers as someone who, in interacting with their staff, their team, mm. actually brings the best out of them yes. by, in a sense, asking questions and empowering them to, to think through the challenges to solve a problem. Absolutely. And what we found when we studied these multipliers is they think very differently mm. than their counterparts, we call diminishers, yeah. is they really have this belief that people are smart and will figure it out. Mm. And so rather than hold the ownership, rather than hold the burden of responsibility for solving the problems mm. of the business, these are leaders who share that burden. Mm. Instead of coming up with all the answers, they ask the big questions and they shift that burden and blessing of thinking onto other people. Mm. So people are forced to figure it out, to exercise intellectual muscle and well, get smarter. Well, there's one of the, the greatest CEOs on the planet, it would have to be Steve Jobs, looking at Apple share price, kicking through $400 the other day. What, is he a multiplier? You know, Steve is really interesting. And, you know, I'm from Silicon Valley. I spend a lot of time down at Apple. And... Steve is a very interesting case. A lot of people who would read about his leadership in the press might say, you know, Steve's a bit of a diminisher because mm. he's a little bit of a hothead mm. and he can be a bit of a micromanager. Mm. But Steve has got an absolute multiplier side to him. He's a talent magnet, which mm. is one of the things we found. He attracts Great people table. to him. People say they do their best work around Steve. Mm. And he's an incredible challenger. He asks people to do things that are impossible. He mm. really, he stretches everyone around him to mm. solve really impossible challenges. So you're not necessarily a, a nice person who just says, I don't know the answers, I'll ask you to find them. what do you think? <laughs> yeah, no, you think? no, he is, he's not that way. And what we found when we studied these multipliers, this is not soft leadership. Yeah. Yes, they have a side that's encouraging mm. and supportive. Empathetic. They are empathetic, but they are demanding. Mm. They, ex they think people are smart, yeah. and they want all of the intelligence around them. Steve's a great example of someone who's a very demanding, hard-edged mm. leader. Mm. And we find that many of these multipliers are this way. Did you interview or come across a, a well-known leader who, who once was a diminisher and then reformed and became a multiplier? Oh, absolutely. Um, an example in business would probably be Bill Campbell, who's the C former CEO of Intuit. He's okay. now chairman of the board. Probably one of the most sought-after people in Silicon Valley. Mm. I went to interview him. People said he's an absolute multiplier. He's the behind-the-scenes advisor to Amazon, Google, Steve Jobs mm. at Apple. Mm. When I sat down with Bill to discuss his multiplier approach to leadership, he said, Liz, I began my career as one of the great diminishers of all times. Mm. He was the head football coach for um, Columbia University's mm. football team. He said, I called in all the plays, called the shots, made the decisions, told everyone what to do. Mm. And he got a wake-up call 
um, a little near mutiny on his team when he was uh, left Apple, was leading Claris, and he absolutely became a multiplier. Mm. He started to listen. He started to ask questions. He started to identify the genius of people around him, and he's actually known as someone who is a multiplier of multipliers mm. and really a key advisor. Now, when I heard you speak, you also talked about the fact that there are accidental diminishers, and that that's the way I justified some aspects of my personality, and I think my wife did exactly the same thing. Yeah, you know, I'm the rescuer. I've got the great ideas. And the, now I'm more like the great ideas. I've got the great ideas, and everyone has to listen to my great ideas. And, and my wife is more like, oh, I think I can solve this problem. So diminishes aren't necessarily aggressive. You know, you, hit, you do this and listen to, listen to me. They can have a different style of diminishing. You know, actually, a lot of the diminishers we studied were really nice people. Mm. People that were pleasant to be around, but they diminished the intelligence of others because they rescued. Mm. Because when they saw someone struggling, rather than let someone scrape their knees, mm. they jumped in and yeah. would intervene. Because their track record was such. They, they, they've been through this and they can solve this problem. They know how to solve it and yeah. it's painful to watch other people fall. Or yeah. maybe they're someone who has such a dynamic presence mm. that they end up sort of taking up all the space. Yeah in the room and we found that a lot of us can accidentally diminish and shut down the intelligence of I know people one of the them. country's um, most famous entrepreneurs saw himself in one of those accidental diminishing mm -hmm. roles but I won't name who he is. Uh, look, before we go into it, in case I run out of time, one of the things you said in the lecture was that you actually tested out what you, you'd learnt from great business leaders on your family at bedtime. So take us through that, that story. Sure. This was, um, this was about 10 years ago, yeah. and I am um, you know, have a pretty big job at Oracle. I've got three small children at mm. home, six, four, and two, mm. and I'm just complaining, really, to one of my colleagues. Yeah. I'm like, you know, truth be told, I'm a bit of a bossy mom. You know, mm. I'm constantly telling my kids a what to do. Dementia. Yeah. Well, I didn't know. I didn't have the term <laughs> at the time, but that would have been me. And... You know, bedtime was, kids, kids, come on, get into bed, yeah. put your pajamas on, brush your teeth, you know. And, and my colleague said, Liz, I want you to go home tonight and just for fun, talk to your children only in the form of questions. Mm. No statements, no directions, just questions. And I said, well, that's three and a half hours. Mm. How am I possibly going to do that? <laughs> he said, nothing but questions. And I took this little challenge that I've come to call the extreme question challenge. Mm. And that night for three and a half hours nothing but questions mm. came out of my mouth and it was amazing what happened at bedtime mm. because I said well it's 8.30 what time is it? Mm. Well it's bedtime what do we do? We put our pajamas on mm. and then what's next? We clean our teeth and then what do we do? We read a book and, and we get into bed mm. and the next thing I know they're in bed. And they didn't notice that you were, you were different? They, no. They actually they went along for the ride? No because they, they knew how to do this and what I found is when I shifted out of the mode of having to have all the answers and telling people what to do, mm. I found out my kids were, they were brilliant. Mm. They were little bedtime geniuses, yeah. um, so to speak. And I started to shift the way I operated at work. Mm. And I started asking the questions and letting other people find the answers. Mm. And I could see literally people getting smarter and more capable. And, mm. and that's what we essentially found in this study is that these multipliers, it's not just a nice way to lead. We mm. found that these multipliers get twice the intelligence levels and the capability of people around them mm. than the diminishers. I was reading John Maxwell only today, and he has a little section in his book where he says, the great leaders add value to people mm. and they get better. And then, and of course, the people get so good, they then become multipliers. He actually used that word. I was actually surprised to see he used the same word. Interesting. But, but the observation is that the great leaders have this capacity to bring the best out of people, and the results become multiplying. Oh, absolutely. They, they extract all of the intelligence of people around them. They mm. unleash it on the hardest problems of the business, and then they get this multiplier effect as mm. this spreads across an organization and other leaders become multipliers to other people. Yeah. So there's this really compelling business proposition. It's smart leadership, okay. not just nice leadership. Great observation. The question is, how easy is it to com convert yourself from a diminisher to a multiplier? You did it at home by just simply taking the challenge. But in, in leadership, have you found people have said, well, I want to do it, but I find it hard? Yeah, you know, it's, it's about small things. It's not about transformational change. It's not about trying to adopt 
a entirely different leadership style. It's what are the small things that you can do? You know, can you shift to asking the questions mm -hmm. instead of providing the answers? Maybe it's you take up just a little less space in a meeting and instead of having a constant presence, maybe you play your chips like poker chips mm -hmm. so that you dispense your ideas in small but intense doses. Mm -hmm. Maybe when, when your staff brings you a problem, instead of taking the bait and solving it for them, mm -hmm. Maybe you just hand it back, knowing that they actually know the answer and they know how to solve it. It's a bunch of small things added together, kind of put someone down the path of being a multiplier. Okay. If someone wants to hear you, because you've spoken in Melbourne, tomorrow is Sydney. Yes. And Brisbane day after? Day after, okay. yes. So what's the website that someone should go to to see you know, where you are and how they can you know, hear you? All of these seminars are being coordinated through the Growth Faculty, yep. and you can see them at growthfaculty.com.au. Okay, one last question, Liz. Um, do you think that once you become a multiplier, you actually find that your life improves because you've taken away frustrations that existed when you were a diminisher? You know, we do because not only does it improve, it's liberating for the people around you, mm -hmm. but the multipliers that, not only that we studied in the research, but that I've I've taught or coached or been exposed to as they've implemented these ideas, they say, Liz, this has been a liberating experience for me, mm -hmm. that they no longer feel the weight and the burden of having to do all the thinking, have all the answers, take ownership for everything. As they shift that ownership mm -hmm. and they use their intelligence to bring out the intelligence of others, mm -hmm. this weight comes off them and yeah. off their management team. That's why I love your example about home because no one wants anxiety and, and pain at home. We want happiness all the days of our lives. So it seems to me the, the solution is ask questions. Ask questions is a great starting point. Great. Well, Liz, thanks for joining us on the program and good luck. Thanks for having me. Coming up, I'll be chatting to property guru John Edwards on whether it's time to buy property on the Queensland Gold Coast at a time when prices have been plummeting. But first, here's how the blue chips fared today.